In the last video, we added this nice form to our login page. Now what we're going to do is we have to add a database that will store all the data when users come to this form and enter in their data. So we can do that, of course, in Visual Studio. And the first thing I want you to do is go ahead and right click on our website project. And we're going to add new item. And then I want you to scroll down and we're going to add a SQL database which is right here. And you're just going to go ahead and hit add. Now you may or may not get this prompt. It will ask you to add an app underscore data folder and you want to select yes to this. But if you don't get this dialog box, just go ahead and manually add the folder to your project. And then you want to add the database to that folder because this is sort of the standard format that Microsoft uses. So let's go ahead and hit yes to that. And there you can see we've now got our app data folder. Here is our database and it opens up Server Explorer, which allows us to view our database. Now every database needs a table. And let's go ahead and flip back to the website for a moment before we add the table. Now generally the way I do this, and you can do this whatever way you want to, but I like to add a table for each individual page where I'm storing data. So for instance, this form here, we're just gonna add a table that will handle this entire form. But let's say we had another link here and we had another form or something. I usually would create another table for that, a different table. So we only need one table and we'll add a column in that table for each one of these fields. So we'll add a name column, we'll add an address column, we'll add a phone column, and we'll add an email column. Okay, so let's go back to Visual Studio. And what we're going to do is right click on tables and we're going to add new table. Okay, so we're going to get this design view that first comes up. The first thing we're going to do is rename our table. The default name is table, but we want to rename that. We can do that right down here. And we're just going to call this login table. So that's the name we're going to give it. Now, this is what we call the primary key. Every table has a primary key. We're not going to worry about that right now, so we can just go ahead and leave that alone. But we're going to create our very first column. And again, we're going to call that name. Now, the data type that we're going to select is this N var car with 50 characters. So we're going to go ahead and select that. We don't need to worry about that right now, but that basically allows us to add Unicode characters. So we're going to go ahead and use that. And for now, we're going to go ahead and allow nulls. We may change that later on. Now, let's go ahead and add the rest. We're going to add address, and we'll do the same thing for each one of these. And we needed a phone, and we needed a column for email. So we'll go ahead and add that as well. There we go. So we've got all four of our columns now that we need. Now, you may be inclined to go ahead and hit save, but actually first you want to hit update. This will actually update the database itself with all of these columns we've added. So go ahead and hit that now. And then you're just going to go ahead and select this update database option right here. And then you'll see down in our little message box, we got the update completed successfully. So we're good to go. Now, go ahead and save the project itself. We'll do a save all. And then what I want you to do is actually close out and we're going to reopen this because I've seen some instances where the table actually wasn't saved. So what we want to do is close out of this and then come back in and make sure our table is actually there. So go ahead and exit out of Visual Studio. So again, go ahead and open up your Visual Studio project. And once you have your project back open, let's go ahead and select our database. And what we want to do now is expand this tables node here. And there you can see we've got our login table and hopefully you do as well. Now, what I want you to do is right click on our table and you're going to select show table data. So go ahead and hit that. And here you can see we've got all of our four columns. This is exactly the way it looks in any professional database that you will see out there on the market. They will have all of their columns and sometimes many more added to their table. Now, the reasons these show null is we haven't entered any data into here yet. But when we do, when we start adding records, our rows will be created and we'll see the data populated. So if Larry logs in and creates an account, we'll see a row here added. And we'll get to that in a few videos. Okay, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.